During the 1932 presidential election, Hitler stood against Hindenburg. Hindenburg was elected president of Germany. However, Hitler was also successful in winning a large number of votes. This has shown that by 1932, Hitler and the Nazis had made themselves a national party and through the use of propaganda um, and the leadership of Goebbels with that, they were becoming more and more successful over time. This really then started off Hitler's bid to become Chancellor of Germany by 1933. We're going to have a look at how the uh, events of July 1932 to January 1933 helped bring the Nazis to power. Firstly, we should think about um, how popular the Nazis were. So by March 1932, the Nazis were the second largest party in the Reichstag. They were well known across Germany. A general election was called for on the 31st of July 1932 and the Nazis were optimistic about improving their number of votes um, from the previous election. There was a lot of violence leading up to the election. A hundred people were killed and more than 1,125 were wounded in clashes between the political parties. However, in this election, the Nazis won 230 seats and did become the largest party in the Reichstag. The Chancellor at the time was a man called von Papen and he was leader of the Centre Party. Despite not having the most seats, he did not give up his post and he began to scheme with President Hindenburg. Hitler demanded the post of Chancellor and at a meeting with Hitler in August, Hindenburg refused um, to allow Hitler the post of Chancellor even though he led the largest party in the Reichstag. Von Papen, realising that he couldn't run or maintain a coalition government with the Nazis as powerful as they were, called for new elections to be set for in November. Von Papen had the opinion that the Nazis were losing momentum. He believed that if he held on, they would disappear from the scene. The Nazis did lose some votes in the 1932 election, but they still uh, remained the majority and the largest party. Von Papen could not secure a majority and Hitler once again demanded the post of Chancellor. Von Papen started to lose Hindenburg's confidence and eventually he resigned. Hindenburg, still not wanting to put Hitler as Chancellor, um, gave the post to somebody called von Schleiser. Von Schleiser hoped to gain a majority in the Reichstag by bringing together different parties from the left and the right. But this did not sit well with von Papen, who was determined to regain power. So he met with Hitler in January 1933. They decided that they would lead a Nazi nationalist government with von Papen as the vice-chancellor, with Hitler as chancellor. This is known as political intrigue. Von Papen was therefore able to convince President Hindenburg that a coalition government with Hitler as Chancellor would save Germany and bring stability. Von Papen told Hindenburg that they would be able to control Hitler. And so on the 13th, uh, 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany. He was a leader of the largest party and he had been invited to be leader to be Chancellor by the President. He had achieved his aim by legal and democratic means. Okay, so other than political intrigue, let's have a look at other reasons that Hitler came to power. Okay, Um, one of the biggest things that we could talk about uh, is Hitler's shining personality. Okay, his strength, um, his vision, the change in tactics from 24 to 29, the speeches that he gave, uh, the imagery that he put on of being Germany's saviour. Also, we could talk about Nazi propaganda, the fact that they appealed to many different groups in society, that they promised work and bread, that they promised they would tear up the Treaty of Versailles. They appealed to youth groups, to women, to the middle classes, to farmers. The Wall Street crash of 1929 
another economic crisis that the Weimar government were unable to deal with and fix, another reason for people to be angry and frustrated with their government. This is the third time that they had felt the effects of unemployment and hunger and desperation, firstly in World War One with the defeat at 1919, then with hyperinflation in 1923, and now again in 1929. So people lost faith in their government. And it's kind of in these extreme circumstances that people turned to extremist parties like the Nazis. And another reason that Hitler came to power in 1933 was the voting. Okay, they were the second largest and then the largest party in the Reichstag. They had a lot of support and they continued to keep that momentum going.